Have you ever wanted a katana that has a skill which is unblockable, causes blood loss buildup, and can scale to a B tier? Well, you're in the right place because I'm going to show you how to get it. But I must warn you, this weapon was very hard to attain, but it's so worth it. I literally had to go through leaps and bounds to make this happen. I fought about five bosses, traveled to distant lands in order to attain it. You know, this is actually very good for your progression as well, unlocking so many sites of grace. Also, I made it to a beautiful area where I encountered some OG tree sentinels. So strap in and follow me as I take you on this journey. Now, I didn't want to make this video too long because this weapon we're getting called Sword of Night comes with a full set of armor called the Armor of Night. You can find that in a dungeon called Bonny Gal, southwest from the Bonny village side of grace across the bridge. And the reason I'm not showing you that in this video is because I'm using a different armor set that caters more to the playstyle I'm using for a build I'm making for the Sword of Night. It's called the Black Knife Armor Set and that's located past the hidden path of Halleck Tree in the snow area of the original Elden Ring map. That being said, let me show you how to get this bad boy. It all starts at the Bonnie Village side of Grace and you want to head over to this tree and grab the Old Mother Emote. If you don't get this, then you can't get the sword, so don't forget it. Head back to Bonnie Village, then travel east to the bridge, then another bridge afterwards. And as you progress, make sure you unlock all sites of grace you see. From here, you'll just need to travel the path shown until you get to another side of grace up the hill. Once there, take the path veering to the left, and that'll take you to where this all starts, the Cathedral of Manus Meter. There's a king there, his name is Ymir. You gotta talk to him. He'll give you a necklace and one of three maps, each with a mission to complete in order to get what you need. The first map he gives you is this ruins map. Now this is what I was referring to when I said this not only allows you to get the sword but also opens up a ton of new and secret areas to explore. By the way, I can't wait to do that and see all the enemies I passed up to attain this. But anyways, here's how you get to the ruins map. Travel to the graveside plain side of grace. From there, travel east to the cliff. And you have to scale this entire cliff. It's fairly easy, just be careful. Once you get to the bottom, head towards the pink flower to the right. There's an entrance to another area behind it. Remember, unlock the sights of grace as you see them. Then keep going and you will reach a waterfall. Jump across to get to the other side, then there'll be another waterfall past the sight of grace. Scale this mountain as well until you get to the wooded area. If you see the fire troll, then you're in the right place, but stay to the right and eventually you'll see another path to the right and up the hill with blue flowers. Take this all the way across to the beach. And as you ride along the shoreline, you'll see a structure you can travel upwards and past 
and that is the finger of ruins, Raya. Unlock that side of grace and travel downward. Now, this area is where I started seeing enemies that make my skin crawl. Basically snakes with arms and legs. I can't wait to come back and explore this area. Look at what it did to me. Can you imagine what's in its mouth? But ultimately, you want to get here and interact with the statue. That necklace Ymir gave us is what is allowing this to happen. That is the first part of this quest, and you're almost there. Travel back to the Cathedral of Manus Meter and talk to Ymir again to progress further. He'll then give you the Sacred Ruins map and a beloved Stardust Talisman. This is awesome, especially while in the heat of battle, because it speeds up your cast speed. Okay, back to the guide. Here's how you get to the second ruins map he gave you. Travel to the District High Road and follow the path until you find this doorway leading into a dungeon. You're going to be forced off your horse eventually. And once you get up to this final area, you have to jump these rooftops to the other side. Just follow what I do. Once you get to this rooftop, there's a strong enemy. I thought about sneaking past him, but I wanted to take a risk, so I destroyed him and moved on. You can sneak past him if you want, it's your choice. But keep going this way, then drop down into the building. Then jump here and drop down. There'll be two guards. Let the first one pass through. Then run through the next door, down the hall, and turn left. Through this door, to the lift. You see that ladder? It's a big one. So climb all the way at top. And from this point on, I wouldn't really recommend fighting anyone. Just keep going through the library and jump outside and take the stairs up to the next side of grace. Hop in the elevator and it'll take you up further. Turn left then right, then right again, up the next ladder. Travel the path, then drop down to this gear looking platform, run and jump across, then drop down into the library. Go outside and to the right where there's another lift that'll take you down. Go further down to another lift, Go into the door on the right of the side of grace and this is where that old mother emote comes in handy. Use it in front of the statue and it will take you to the most beautiful area in the DLC. Scatter view. This is where those tree sentinels are that I was talking about. And I'm definitely coming back to fight them and just to explore the area to see what I can find out. But for now, just run past until you get to this bridge and then you'll find another finger area past here. You'll be looking for that statue again that when you interact with looks like you blow into it. So get past all these fingers and travel downward. Find your way here, then interact again.
man, these enemies are relentless and have very strong spells. Also, they can grab you, which will result in an instant death in most cases, so be careful. After interacting with that, make your way back to Ymir at the cathedral for your final task. When talking to him, exhaust all of the talking points, then travel back to the site of grace at the cathedral. It should already be nighttime, but if not, pass time until then because this is the only way that he won't be there. And if you do this right, then he won't be sitting on the throne. So head over there and interact with the throne. This will open a secret area below it. This area is called the Finger Ruins of Mir. Okay, prepare yourself because you're going to get invaded by Night Anna. It's a fairly easy fight, and she'll drop for you another part of the night set, the Claws of Night. They scale with dexterity, and they start off at C tier, which means that once they upgrade, the tier is going to be pretty high, and these are going to be strong. Now, once you do this comes the greatest challenge. Head up here and interact with this other statue, and you're going to be fighting this boss named Meter, the Mother of Fingers. Now, I have a separate video going into detail about how to actually do this effectively, and I really kind of bullied her in that. This video is simply to explain how to get the Sword of Night. I'll link that video of how to specifically be here in the description below. But after you defeat her, travel back to the cathedral and heads up. You just pissed Ymir off because clearly he loved the Mother of Fingers and wants to kill you to get revenge. So when you interact with the throne, once again, you're going to get invaded by Sword Hand of Night Jalan. She's actually using the Sword of Night and you get a glimpse of how devastating it is when she hits you with it. The technique I used to kill her was the Dragon Hunter, great sword. It's a stagger god and will interrupt almost anyone's attacks. This basically destroyed her. After this, Ymir will appear near the throne and he's using an intelligence build, spawning many fingers and being annoying. I used the same weapon against him and it was a breeze. Now before getting the Sword of Night, there's one last thing you must get. Head to the Fort of Reprimand here and drop down this hole to the left. Kill this enemy and you'll get the Iris of Oculation. This is a legendary item believed to have ties to ancient arcane powers. It is said to hold the ability to conceal the wearer from the sight of gods and demons, making it a coveted item for those who wish to navigate the treacherous lands of the Earth Tree without drawing unwanted attention. It's perfect for a stealth build, which I'm in the process of making for this weapon. But after getting this, head back to the cathedral again for the final time, and you'll see a knight laying against the pillar. After talking to him, you can present the Iris of Oculation. Then finally you get the Sword of Night. I told you it was hard to get, but it's so worth it. The katana is amazing. It scales with dexterity, and once leveled goes to a B tier, which is awesome for any weapon. After leveling it up, this is how it looks at its full potential. That'll be the end of this guide, and if you made it here, you're a goat. And I appreciate you stopping by. If this helped you out in any way, then like the video. Also, subscribe if you're new here. I'll see you in the next one. Be right out.